Hi, good afternoon. It's Gene from Avstar Observatory. Guys, I thought I'd just do a quick video for you because we had missed uh, the data in the emails that we get sent uh, from our locations around the world where we got our magnetometers. And this had happened, one of the emails had got lost in a load of them just before Christmas from Perth, Australia. And uh, I was speaking to one of our superstars yesterday, Jeff in Perth, Australia, who collects uh, not only magnetometer data, but he's also got one of our muon detectors. And um, he just said, you know, did you uh, overlook the email I sent you before Christmas? And, um, you know, on checking that, he'd obviously sent the data that we're looking at now. Um, and it also sent us uh, some good run time on the muon detector. I'll get to the muon detector and the information with regards to that in a bit. But as you can see, uh, if we just look over the last couple of data sets that come from Perth, you know, it's still hovering around the 60. There was a little drop there, not sure why. Um, I think it might be an error uh, on the magnetometers part because usually when it drops off like that and doesn't come back up as fast, that's an indication that maybe it's been knocked or you know an anomaly has occurred in the data collecting. But we've got a beautiful uh, data set um, from the 27th of the 9th to uh, the 12th of the 11th, 2020. So that's the data uh, that got mixed up in the emails and you know it's been added to the site, obviously. Um, you know tomorrow is the uh, 17th of the month and on the 17th we collect the TriMag data and do a latest magnetic pole position over the Northern Hemisphere and just have a look at how fast uh, the migration is taking to see if there has been any uh, you know noticeable spikes in the distance covered over the same period of time. Um, so tune in tomorrow for that. So I've got some interesting facts for you. Talking about magnetic poles, where do you think the magnetic north pole was 800,000 years ago? Well, thanks to Jeff, he sent me uh, information on an article which I done a little bit of research on and found, and this is what we found. Just bear with me, we'll get it up. And this is the position. It was in Australia 800,000 years ago. So 20,000 years before the pole had reversed, magnetic north pole was in Pilbara. Now, Jeff said to me, when you say Pilbara, Jane, you've got to say it like an Aborigine. I don't know quite how they would say it, but I'm probably living already by saying Pilbara. But I will, for Jeff's uh, sake, try and say it like an Aborigine. Are you ready? Pilbara, mate. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, according to paleology records, this is would have been uh, the position for the magnetic north pole. Oh dear. And uh, this is Pilbara, which is um, north western Australia, I believe. And this is the location of it. It does go on this article to talk about the, uh, you know, the supercontinent Gondwana. But I don't think there really is anything uh, to go digging into the roots of Godwana because Godwana would have been breaking away from that. Uh, them, them continents uh, would have been breaking away from Gondwana around 180 million years before this reversal took place. But it is interesting, and it, I think it is a fact that we've never covered before as to where it was um, 800,000 years ago. So Australia had the magnetic North Pole a hundred uh, eight hundred thousand years ago so i just thought i'd add that now just before we wrap up i wanted to just show you or just briefly uh you know tell you how many muons australia's had but i want to also pull up another magnetic map because i think it'll put it in context because there is a big difference to the muons that are collected in australia as you're about to see as to the ones that are collected here in the uk and i think i know why that is so let's get that map up for you so as we can see, the magnetic intensity over Australia is close to the range of 60,000 uh, nanoteslas. If we look over uh, where the UK is in between the two um, highest intensities over the Northern Hemisphere, you can see that we're in a weakened area, probably around 40,000 uh, nanoteslas, if that. And that means we're going to get more impacts. Now, this is great 
right if it continues to show us this data and i'll just tell you first of all that the runtime for jeff's magnetometer uh, sorry muon detector was 46 days uh so that was 1000 no 11000 no so okay you can work it out by the hours i think it's uh 1118 hours or thereabouts so 46 days worth of uh, data and when we break it down with the little bit of maths that we use to work out the square meter per hour we end up with a figure of 159 muons per square meter per hour and you can see uh, when you look at this map the intensity over australia is in the 60,000 uh, nanoteslas compared to where it is here in the uk and you know if you just uh, it, tune in tomorrow you'll see that not only now am i adding uh, you know UK uh, muons to uh, the earth alpha at a glance I'm also adding um, uh, what is it uh, the ones that we're collecting now from Australia as well and as soon as we get some more muon detectors out into other parts of the field I'll add them more together so we will get an idea of where the better protection is where the worst protection is on our planet and it will give us an idea as to how much radiation is inbound in them regions so first thing here guys is that we know now that when you're in a weakened magnetic intensity uh, as opposed to a strong magnetic intensity you get a lot more uh, muons and I would expect a lot more background radiation as well if we compare um, you know on average what we get here in the UK is around about 500 muons per hour per square meter as opposed to what Australia is getting because it's in that better protective air region they get uh, one, uh, 159 muons per hour per square meter so that puts it into perspective doesn't it guys and it also gives us now we've got two muon uh, detectors out in the field we've got around about five uh, magnetometers in the field it would be amazing if we could get that number up to both magnetometers and muons 30 in different locations around the world and the reason why I say that number 30 is not nothing to do with Nikola Tesla by the way it is because there was an experiment which we're going to have to have a look at, which I think isn't accurate because, you know, you put errors in, you're going to get errors out. So I'm talking about the um, remodeling of the interior of the Earth's core that scientists did using uh, liquid uh, sodium metal. So it's heated up and it was spun four times a second and it did generate, apparently, a magnetic field. Now, first of all... Um, they're using sodium as opposed to iron in the core so i think there's errors in straight away um, but we will look at that experiment um so i think uh for now is we'll end it here there's no point going on anymore because i think you've got the main um chunk of the information so other than that it'd just be rambling wouldn't it come come back tomorrow guys we'll have the earth um not the earth alpha at a glance we'll do the uh trimag data um and the magnetosphere uh, readings for you and uh, we'll see just how far the magnetic north pole has migrated in the last month um, like I say it would be great if we could build a few more magnetometers uh, it would be great if we could raise a little bit of money for the observatory and if you want to help do that it is not mandatory but we don't really go anywhere without funding but if you want to help the links are down there in the comments section or you can go over to our website and click that rare button that hardly ever gets clicked nothing else to say guys in this upload other than take care of your loved ones, and I'll say what I usually do. Bye for now.